I just thought that I'd probably just double up today on another video. So, welcome to Exposing 21st Century Satanism. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about the the um, fallen angels and the um, and the whole meaning behind why God allows these fallen angels and Satan and his army to still exist today because a lot of people probably ask if God is so powerful and God is sovereign will and and God is endless love then how on earth would he ever allow this to continue to take place and the thing is that we need to understand that God is sovereign and his will is the only will that will be done but we need to pay attention because like Hollywood and their satanic agendas especially with their movie that they put out Noah in 2014 which was like a mockery of of basically mocking the actual biblical story and we just need to really really pay attention to what goes on around us but this video today is going to be on fallen angels and why God allows these fallen angels to exist and basically we are given free will so therefore Jesus Christ has given us free will and Jesus Christ has paid the ultimate debt which was dying for our sins so we have the choice now and Satan is the evil one Jesus Christ is the way to the Father he's the way of life now if you think about it there's a reason why we have fallen angels because they rebelled against God and Lucifer wanted to be just like God and him wanting to be just like God it drove him to be it drove him in to madness in order to, for Satan to try to be like God he assembled other angels in heaven who might rebel with him but what had happened was God cast him out of heaven and threw him down and that is where he has been ever since. But God allows it. Excuse me. Because that's one thing when people say. Excuse me. That's one, one thing when people say, you know what? I think Satan is the king of this earth. Now, there's no denying. Satan has been given authority from God to to be able to hold dominion on this earth for a short a short while for only a short while key word for a short while because when jesus comes back in all his glory he'll 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 come to to basically take back what was his and 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 the chance for redemption at that point will be slim to none so it's very important in the time before jesus's second coming that you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because when he does come it will be a life or death situation and it's pretty real and it's more real than you could quite possibly imagine because just the whole story of the Bible is an incredible story you have the story of Adam and Eve who were in the garden who the serpent had deceived Eve and Eve had deceived Adam into eating and then you had basically them being kicked out of the garden and that it leading all the way up to the first murder when Cain killed Abel and basically it just continued to transpire until the days of Noah that the world had become so corrupt that it, it had become an abomination before the eyes of the Lord. The world had become so distraught 
and so filled with evil that the only thing in men's hearts continuously was evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. That's the only thing that was within men and women. And the whole thing about God was that God said he will never destroy the world again with a great flood. But instead, next time, he'll destroy the world with fire, you know? And that's also the second death, the lake of fire. So they mention hell, but also beware that for those that do not have the life of Jesus Christ, the second death is ultimately the lake of fire where that is where Satan and his rebellious army are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And if you understand the whole reason for Jesus Christ allowing Lucifer to be loosened on this earth is for one reason. One reason and that one reason is just to see if, if man can truly make the right decision. You know, if man can truly follow God in all his in all his will. And so God doesn't tempt us, but God has allowed Satan to hold dominion on this earth for a short while. But the truth is, God is still sovereign will and God is almighty and he can and and basically has the power to abolish anything at any time. But the problem is that we've we become so we become so I would say blinded by everything around us, especially entertainment and, and all other aspects. But basically the whole thing about this is that the fallen angels it says here in this article at the CARM, the CARM.org, it says, what are fallen angels? And that's a good question, right? What are fallen angels? Well, fallen angels are created, it says here, fallen angels are created spiritual beings who rebelled against God. Angels are used by God as messengers, warriors, and servants. The word angel comes from the Greek word angelos which means messenger. Angels are spiritual beings without bodies of flesh. So when you speak of bodies of flesh and bones, you speak of a mortal body, though they apparently have the ability to, pe to appear in human form. As you can see in Genesis 19 verses 1 to 22, angels have many functions. They praise God, Psalms 103, 103, 20, served as messengers to the world Luke 1 11 through 20 26 through 38 Luke 2 9 through 14 and they watched over God's people Psalm 91 11 through 12 and were sometimes used as instruments of God's judgment Matthew 13 49 through 50 now understand Fallen angels are those angels who rebelled against God. So see, the connection is here that these angels rebelled against God along with Lucifer. Now listen, an archangel who became the devil. So Lucifer, along with Lucifer, an archangel. And in, in, the, in the definition of, this is at the same C-A-R-M dot org CARM, um, CARM, I think that's how you pronounce that, C-A-R-M dot org. And the meaning they give behind Archangel is a classification of angels who have great rank and power. Apparently there are three Archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. The word Archangel is found in only the New Testament in two places. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first in Jude 1.9 But Michael the archangel when he disputed with the devil who was Lucifer and argued about 
the body of Moses did not dare pronounce against him a railing judgment, but said, the Lord rebuke you. So you have to understand that Satan, Lucifer, and his fallen angels attempted to rebel against God. But as you can see, the following are verses often quoted in reference to the evil one. Here it says, how, ye, have you, how you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the earth. You have weakened the nations. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recess of the north. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. Now understand. Most scholars agree that one third of the angels fell into sin and became demons. One third. Meaning two thirds of the angels did not go forth in Satan, Lucifer's plan. So one third fell into sin and became demons. Now listen. Another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his head were seven diadems, and his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven, and threw them to the earth. Revelation 12, 13, 3 through 4. In the future, there will be a judgment upon the fallen angels. Then shall he say also unto them, on the left on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, 41. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. Second Peter 2, 4. Now listen. Understand. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the, unto the judgment of the great day. Jude 1, six. Now look, understand. And the great dragon was cast out, and the old serpent called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with them. Revelation 12, 9. And I will post that link in the description. So, we kind of have a little bit of a better idea of what fallen angels are. As like fallen angels, you know, they kind of fell from heaven. You see, they wanted power that was not ordained to them. So, Lucifer was like, look, we're going to overthrow God. And I need you guys to back me up. And so the angels were like to Lucifer, okay, sure, we'll back you up, you know. And God was like, hold up, I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm God. And it's going to take a lot more than a third of you to overthrow. And even if all of you did, you still would not overthrow God. But as you know, two thirds of the angels did not follow Lucifer. But one third of the angels did fall from heaven. So look, here is another article which I will post in the description in the link. And, and here's a question. We've got a lot of questions as human beings, as Christians, as people. We have questions and we need to question. In order to understand, we have to question. If we don't question, what goes around us, then we won't understand and will subliminally, blindly follow things without understanding the true meaning of what goes on and therefore being blinded by not the light of truth, but the light of Lucifer, who makes himself appear as a light of good, as a beacon of hope. But Lucifer is an antichrist. So look. Listen, understand. Okay, it says here, 
How is Satan God of this world? Second Corinthians four four question mark. So to answer the phrase God of this world or God of this age, more importantly, God is allowing Satan to have control for a little while. But ultimately, like I mentioned before, God is sovereign will. So therefore, no matter how much influence Satan has, he can never overthrow God. So listen, this indicates that Satan is the major influence on the ideals, opinions, goals, hopes, and views of the majority of people. And who is the majority of people? The majority of people is the nations which inhabit this earth. His influence also encompasses the world philosophies, education, and commerce. The thoughts, ideas, and speculations and false religions of the world are under his control and have sprung from his lies and deceptions. Now understand, look, Satan is also called the prince of the power of the air. In Ephesians 2.2, 2, he is the ruler of this world, of this earth. In John 12.31, these titles and many more signify Satan's capabilities. To say, for example, that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Is to signify that in some way he rules over the world and the people in it should also highlight that in some way he rules over the world and the people in it. He's not sovereign. We need to remember. This is not to say that he rules the world completely. God is still sovereign, but it does mean that God, but it does mean that God in his infinite wisdom has allowed Satan to operate in this world within the boundaries, keyword boundaries of God. The boundaries God has set for him. When the Bible says Satan has power over the world, we must, we must remember that God has given him dominion, domain over unbelievers only. Key word. Over unbelievers only. That's interesting. Now understand. Look. Believers are no longer under the rule of Satan. Colossians 1.13 Unbelievers, on the other hand, are caught in the snare of the devil. 2 Timothy 2.26 Lie in the power of the evil one. Lie in the power of the evil one. 1 John 5.19 and are in bondage to Satan. Ephesians 2, 2. So, when the Bible says that Satan is the God of this world, it is not saying that he is or he has ultimate authority. It is conveying the idea that Satan rules over the unbelieving world in a specific way. Now listen, understand. In 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the unbeliever follows Satan's agenda. The God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers. So that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Now listen, understand. Satan's scheme includes promoting false philosophies in the world. Philosophies that blind the unbeliever to the truth of the gospel. Satan's philosophies are the fortresses in which people are imprisoned and they must be set free by Christ. An example of one such false philosophy is the belief that man can earn God's favor by a certain act or acts. In almost every false religion, meriting God's favor or earning eternal life is a predominant theme.
but we know Jesus Christ died and we have grace in Jesus Christ and believing in Jesus Christ in the gospel and being a Christian and preaching the good news and telling people to and exposing Satan and his lies. Don't forget, you can't just go on living the truth of Jesus Christ without warning someone or some or, or some unbeliever at least to not mention it is kind of like robbing them of the truth in a sense so it says earning salvation by works however is contrary to biblical revelation man cannot work to earn God's favor so eternal life is a free gift see Ephesians 2 8 9 and that free gift is available through Jesus Christ and him alone. John 3, 16, 4, 6, 14, 6. You may ask why mankind does not simply receive the free gift of salvation. John 1, 12. The answer is that Satan, the God of this world, has tempted mankind to follow his pride instead. Satan sets the agenda the unbelieving world follows follows blindly and that is and mankind continues to be deceived and it is no wonder that the scripture calls satan a liar and now look before we wrap this up let's just get into one last part and this is to speak of fallen angels and why would god allow these fallen angels to even exist and why would God even allow them to even be on this earth if he's sovereign if he's so powerful and a lot of people say well if God is so strong why doesn't he just destroy Satan in all of his glory now look understand why did God allow Satan to tempt Adam and Eve but God does not tempt us but here it says why did God allow Satan to tempt Adam and Eve why did God allow Satan to tempt Adam and Eve to sin he allowed Satan to tempt them did this catch God by surprise what was the purpose for the temptation in the garden? Why the temptation in the garden? When God placed the one tree in that garden that Adam and Eve were forbidden to eat, he was seeing if they would obey him or not. He said, Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Genesis 2:17. Okay. Now understand. Of course, Adam and Eve didn't immediately die, but due but due time they would for there had been but okay. But due time they would for they had disobeyed God. There was nothing in particular special about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but it was the fact that they had made the choice they had a choice to make they could either listen to and obey god or choose their own way mankind has been choosing their own way ever since you could take a look at the world today and see the results when they disobey god sin entered the world for the wages of sin is death romans 6 23 guys god has said that I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. Deuteronomy 30, 15. For the most part, we know which why. For the most part, we know which way mankind is chosen. For just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came all people because all sinned. So look. Fallen angels, Satan, God allowed Satan the ability to tempt Eve 
just to see if they would follow God or follow their own way. Hmm. And mankind has been following their own way ever since. Ever since the fall of Lucifer, ever since. But we need to understand our way or God's way. You cannot pick both. You can only choose one. When Israel tried to rule itself, chaos was the result. Ancient Israel wanted a king. And what they desired was to be like the nations around them, which had their own king. Today, those who are not Christ still desire to be like the world around them. What they were doing was not so much wanting a king, but rejecting God as their king. This is recorded in 1 Samuel 8, 4 through 9. It says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, Behold, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. And it will appoint us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Obey the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you. But they have rejected me from being king over them. According to all the deeds that they had done from that day, I brought them up out of Egypt even to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. So they are also doing to you now, then, obey their voice. Only you shall solemnly, so, solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. And ever since, mankind has been rejecting God as their king and not wanting anyone to rule over them. The results have been disastrous. This is why when even the kings were not ruling Israel anymore. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Judges 7, 6, 17, 6. When people decided for themselves to do what is right in their own eyes or in their own opinions, suffering results. So, men, women, humanity began to become carried away by our own lust of the flesh because satan had a twisted plan the, pl the plan was to get eve to commit the first sin and to have adam follow suit so you need to understand the reason why god allows fallen angels to exist on this earth is to test just how much not not god is not here to to tempt to tempt you but to test your faith to see just how much you love the lord so in the name of jesus christ we pray that you find the truth in the name of jesus christ and that you follow and walk in the light and even though we may stumble and even though we may fall we fall so we can we can pick ourselves back up again so jesus christ is eternal love. Amen.